Hi, in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at similar shapes. Now, these are just that. They're similar. They're not identical. They're not congruent. OK, if we put them over the over each other, there would be overlap because one is basically an enlargement of the other one. OK, all their size lengths are in the same ratio, though. So in this particular example in front of us, we can see that, that um, one of them, this one here, is definitely an enlargement of this one. OK, what we can find is the scale factor. And we find the scale factor by taking a corresponding length, two corresponding lengths, and taking the bigger of the two and dividing by the smaller. OK, so down the bottom here, we can see two corresponding lengths, um, the width, which is four here and two here. So the big one here is the four, the smaller one is the two which gives us a scale factor of two. Now let's check this. Okay, if I times two by two, I get four. If I times four by two, I get eight. Okay, all right, so they're in the same ratio. We could even write them as ratios, four to eight and two to four. Okay, this side is twice as big as this side. Okay, all right, let's look at the next one then. Uh, so in this, this case, we've got to decide um, which ones are corresponding lengths? Okay, so we're best off probably looking at which ones are multiples from, from the smaller one, which ones on the large one are multiples. Okay, um, now two goes into six, so does three, and so does 1.5 actually. Um, the only one I can see, the only way that I can see here, the only factors of four though, um, and not 3 and 1.5, it's only 2. So this must be the corresponding uh, side to this one. And um, if that's the case, okay, then we can work out the scale factor. So the scale factor in this case, remember we take the big one and we divide by the small one. So it's 4 divided by 2, look at that, it's 2 again. It's a very common scale factor. Okay, so if that's the case, um, let's have a look. That would mean 3 times 2 is 6 and 1.5 times by 2 sure enough is 3 okay so we can see that all of those side lengths have just been doubled it's just enlarged the shape all of the side lengths are still in the same ratio and therefore it's a similar shape it's just an enlargement of the smaller one they're two quite simple examples that one was a bit trickier because we had to work out which side lengths corresponded in this third example, we've got um, two triangles, okay? It's just that one is on top of the other one. So if I highlight, actually, this smaller one, okay, you can see, in fact, what I might do is bring it out as well. Um, you can see that we've got a side length of six centimeters, eight centimeters, and K centimeters. The one at the bottom, uh, let's highlight that one. Sorry, not the one at the bottom, the, the whole thing, the whole shape. Okay, let's take that one out and draw it out. So that is in all sorts of colors today. Um, so this one is six plus J centimeters. Let's put that in brackets. This is eight plus four, so this is 12 centimeters and this is 10.5 centimeters. Now, why do we know that they are, how do we know that they are um, similar triangles? Well, first of all, they both share, we can see that they both share this angle here. That's their top angle in both cases. And also these parallel lines here, okay, have on the end of them, some, corresponding angles or sometimes called F angles. So this angle and this angle must also be equal. Same goes on the other side as well. So on this side, we've also got a pair of corresponding angles, pink angles here. And so if all the angles are the same, it means that the ratios of the sides must be the same as well. This side, the, this triangle here has just been enlarged to make this triangle here, okay? So given this information now, what we can do 
is we can take the pair of corresponding side, side lengths that we know, and we can use that formula again, which is that scale factor is equal to big divided by small. In this case, we only know one pair of definite numbers um, in, in one pair of corresponding sides that have definite numbers, and it's the 12 and the 8. So 12 divided by 8 is 12 divided by 8, 1.5. So we know that this triangle down here is 1.5 times bigger. Okay, and from here now, um, our question is probably going to be asking us to find the unknowns. We have k centimeters and we have 6 plus j centimeters. We're trying to find these side lengths j and k. So um, here we're multiplying to go this way. What's the inverse operation of multiplication? I hope you know that that's to divide. So if we take the 10.5 and divide by so at 1.5, that ought to take us to k. So k must be equal to 10.5 divided by 1.5, which equals 7. So k equals 7. OK. And the next one, let's do it in blue. If I take my 6 and I multiply by 1.5, because I'm going from small to big. Going from small to big, I multiply. Going from big to small, I divide. That makes sense, doesn't it? So if I do 6 times 1.5, I get an answer of 9. And so I know that 6 plus j must be equal to 9. And that tells me that j must be equal to 3. OK, so some nice problem solving going on there. Again, it all stems the beginning step, the first step, was to find the scale factor by doing the big divided by the small. Okay. All right, so last example. Now, in this example, it's very, very similar to the last one, actually. Um, we've got a right angle, and we've got a small right angle triangle, and we've got a large right angle triangle that the small one is lying on top of. Okay, a very similar question, actually. Let's pull out those two triangles, always a good step, so that we can see exactly what we're dealing with. So we've got 12 centimetres, we've got 10 centimetres, we've got um, P plus 1.6 centimetres, and we've got P, and we've got um, 6 centimetres, and we've got 6 plus Q centimetres. Okay, so the first step is to find the scale factor. And there's only one pair of values that are just numbers that don't involve letters, okay? And that's my 12 divided by my 10, which is 1.2. So my scale factor is 1.2. The side lengths in the large in the enlargement are 1.2 times bigger than the side lengths in the smaller uh, object, in the smaller right angle triangle. So now I can work out what the values of P and Q are because I know that 6 multiplied by 1.2 equals 6 plus Q. Now I can just work it out on my calculator. So 6 times 1.2 is equal to 7.2. Oopsie daisy. Let's <laughs> fix that. Um, 7.2 equals sorry, 6 plus Q. So that means that Q must be 1.2. And in the second one, what colour should I go for? Red, it stands out. Um, I know that we're going backwards. Okay, so that was a multiplying by 1.2. Now I'm going from large to small, so I'll be dividing by my scale factor. So I know that P plus 1.6 divided by 1.2 is equal to p. Let's rearrange this. Let's take the 1.2 over here, multiply both sides by 1.2. p plus 1.6 equals 1.2 p. And um, and then we can now work it out. If I take p's over to one side, um, get p's on one side, so I can take away p from both sides, 1.6 is equal to 0 0.2 p. And so p must be equal to 1.6 divided by 
0 0.2, which is equal to 8. Okay. I hope that was nice and clear. That was a very, that was a fun example there at the end. Okay. Hope you enjoyed that and good luck with the work.